So, welcome everyone to another DF Retro Extra, where we look at classic E3 press conferences. And today we are visiting Microsoft for the 2005 E3 media briefing. And joining me to talk about it, Alex oh. Battaglia. Hey John, how you doing? And Richard Ledbetter. Hello there. And yeah, this is an important one, I think, because this is sort of like, this is the counter to Sony's PlayStation 3 reveal. This is where Microsoft basically showcases the Xbox 360. It's a pretty big uh, event, I think, but as we'll see, it's a little different from Sony's. That include my games and my friends. Uh, okay, John, so just to illustrate here, I was at this E3, but I was not at this conference, so this is all new to me, but I did see the Xbox 360 titles that were actually on show at the time, and uh, which were actually running on a mixture of development hardware and retail, well, retail kits, I'm assuming they're development kits that look somewhat like this. Yeah, and that does look a little different from the finished unit. Yeah, it has those curved lines, which I don't actually specifically remember as much as the launch unit itself. It didn't have them, did it? The, the curved kind uh, of... It did, I think look. it had that. It was more like the little bay for the USB ports was different than ah, the okay. feet. But he, okay, here we go. I guess this is like their first introduction. This is, I think this was the first console that shipped at launch with a wireless pad in the box. Yeah, I actually remember that when I actually bought the unit and thinking, wow, here's the future. Wireless controller <laughs> is kind of, how much did that cost? <laughs> but it's actually, you Oh, know. we also get a taste of the new, uh, the dashboard essentially with the, the, the sliding tiles. I forget what they're called, the, the blades. blades. The blades, yeah. yeah. That, we'll, we'll, we'll certainly get there, I'm sure. But yeah, this is very of the era of Microsoft, where they're just like showing ghosts. Um, <laughs> yeah, but they're hip, they're with it. Oh yeah, there's the blades. Oh. There was a tease of Gears of War, the original. Yeah, showing off presumably the non-launched version that, you know, that we've talked about in the PS3 uh, video right. previously. Yeah. PGR3. Yeah, so this is, this is going to be interesting then, because I feel like, as we'll see, Microsoft kind of undersells what the 360 can do. Like, they, they're generally telling the truth here, but they're not going as far as they actually kind of could because I guess this is where software was at this point in time. Yeah, I was about to say, we, we're kind of looking at it now as though they're underselling it when in actual fact this is probably the material, the best material they yeah, had to that's true. actually showcase the console at the time. I specifically remember seeing that image of the Master Chief there with the reflections on his armor and I was thinking, wow, that looked really good. I hope the in-game character model looks like that for the next Halo. Uh, not as good, of course, <laughs> in the end product in Halo 3. Oh, yeah. oh the face plates. You guys oh, remember God. this? I remember yeah, face awesome. plates, yeah. yeah. Oh my God. I mean, the 360 hardware looks awesome. Like, it was a really nice design. Well, it, well, compared to the prior Xbox, where, you know, there wasn't too much in the way of design sensibilities, it's a yeah. massive leap, definitely. Oh, it's the trio. Oh, my God. <laughs> These guys are great. So what are they actually going to be doing here? Just announcing the machine, revealing it, and, uh, well, what? Well, we're here tonight to experience games and redefine what it means to have fun. <laughs> uh, yes, redefined fun. Surely you've never played video games before. Oh, look at that floor. <laughs> and how, how about their, uh, their suits there? Peter Moore was looking pretty good there. Jay Allard's rocking his... Um... Assassin's Creed get up. That's what it looks like it's to me. Kind of, well, I don't get it. It's a hoodie with a, a kind of business jacket on top. This but, is amazing. And a t-shirt below everything. I'm, it's still, orange. I'm still haunted by uh, the memories of Jensen Huang's... A safari suit from the PS3 conference. <laughs> oh, yes. But this takes things to a whole new level. It certainly looks very serious about it. Yeah, Peter Moore's still classy. It's still very of that era clothing, though, in terms of its looseness and things like that. It's actually kind of wonderful to see. It brings back a time. We just need some more beanies. That's, that's all yep. we And here he is talking about... Like, this is, this is the, the HD generation. This is the beginning of it. And by the way, for those that don't remember, the Xbox 360 launched with analog video out only. Mm -hmm. HDMI was added later. Right. It, I've got to hand it to Microsoft, though. They supported virtually every type of connection, of connection and display type at the time. Uh, component, VGA, 
Uh, obviously, if you wanted to go back to the Stone Age, uh, RGB SCART and composite video, S video and whatnot, everything was supported. But you could do crazy stuff. I loved it. I had a 1024 by 768 plasma. Oh yeah, so which, I, actually. Which works just fine in 16 by 9 because, you know, Microsoft really, uh, you know, it is somewhat unfortunate that at launch they had no HDMI interface, but there were very few HDMI screens around at the time. I and actually had a CRT with HDMI, weirdly enough. How what? Yeah, it was a Sony wow. uh, HD CRT. <laughs> wow, John, okay. But yeah, you're right. They supported a lot of options, including uh, VGA, which I ended up using on my plasma. Yeah, it looked awesome as well. So what, what's he actually doing here? Because we, we're talking about video outputs, which I suspect is probably more interesting than what he's telling us about. Oh, well, here, obviously, he's just like walking us through like their uh, accomplishments on the original Xbox. Right. Okay. And I guess what was the single largest day in entertainment history? Mm -hmm. was, <laughs> was it the price cut? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was Halo 2. <laughs> right there. 125 million in one day. That's Because right, okay. keep in mind, this was like, uh, I guess, E3 2005. So Halo 2 had just launched like six months prior to this. And they'd already revealed 360 at that MTV special. Right. But they didn't show that much at the time. So this is like the official like rollout. But what I don't remember is whether this is actually post Sony. Like, I don't... I. Did Microsoft go first as usual? I think they did. If I might be wrong on this, but um, you know, basically the the reaction to the PS3 one was split between this is <laughs> complete and utter fakery and Microsoft are dead. How would they know that Microsoft if de is dead if they hadn't already gone first? Yeah. Right. <laughs> but come on, show us some stuff. I, the man in the well, suit. You know he. He's, he's got to do his, his spiel, that's what, that's what he does. Broadband providers and consumer brands. Now ultimately, our success is rooted in games. And Xbox is sitting- Do you have any idea why they changed the moniker and didn't go for Xbox 2 or anything like that? Is it just because they well, seemed like- I assume it's because it's like, oh, PlayStation 3 uh, trumps Xbox 2. Ugh. Yeah, I think they wanted that, to get a three in there, maybe. That was definitely the reason. Yeah, it was the fact that they didn't want to be seen as being a generation behind. <laughs> yep. And it did spawn that wonderful, stupid saying about when you see an Xbox to do a 360 and turn around, yep. which doesn't make any sense. <laughs> well, what about next gen? 720. Well, there'd be a lot <laughs> yeah. of spinning at that point. <laughs> mm. Oh, so because of all the, the talking, all that game about the original Xbox, I mean. 2005 is when they dropped the system, but they're still showing a few games. Like, here's Half-Life 2 on the original Xbox, which kind of... Uh, is that the original... Is that really what the version looks like, though? Is that, Dude, yeah. Is that yeah, really, yeah. It's, it's pretty it's, good. It's, it's an impressive port. Murder GP3, that series was awesome, actually. I really like that. And then Ultimate Spider-Man. I don't remember if that one was any good, but hey, some 60 FPS action, partially. <laughs> Full spectrum, full spectrum warrior, warrior is ten hammers. hammers. Yeah, the uh, full spectrum warrior, the original though, is so wonderfully well made game, and I think actually really. Attack the great game. juju challenge. Oh, Batman wow. begins. Wow, I don't remember that. Hitman yeah. Blood Money. That's right. It oh came to Xbox and PlayStation Two. Huh. Spartan. I don't. Remember, I don't remember that. I feel like years of my life have been taken away because yeah. I don't recognize any of this. Let's leave I just remember my, my name aliens. only. I, I mean. remember that, yeah. NASCAR 06. <laughs> Was there any sort of rights to DLC? In on? No so, I mean, obviously, like Sony often did, their boy, would that look horrible? They're just getting, <laughs> um, they're getting the old stuff out of the way, so to speak. Trying to pretend that the original Xbox wasn't about to be basically discontinued. <laughs> but I mean there was stuff coming out in 2005 but I kind of feel like the Xbox original hardware never really I mean, it's a really great machine in terms of what it could do for the time but it, I don't think it saw as long of a life as it you know could have supported yeah I think I guess at the end of its lifespan it's shading power was still okay but it just lacked the memory that was going to need going right. forward yeah that's why we saw like the cuts in Half-Life 2 and Doom 3 specifically to get them running. 
Whatever. Exactly. Oh god, that game is still gorgeous, by the way. Yeah, that Conquer is. Live and Reloaded, it's uh, still a Ooh, really good looking game. Out Revenge. Revenge. Awesome. Also 360. with the, the particles, my gosh. I think the other thing about the original Xbox, of course, is that uh, there were various deals that were made with Nvidia and Intel that made it extremely difficult, difficult for them to produce a more cheaper model. Right, exactly. That does make sense. So uh, there, there came a point where it was it just made sense Wait, to move on to 360. Where time, time shift? shift, that would move to 360, I think. Yeah, and look radically different, yep. too. Destroy all humans. I actually tried uh, playing Time Shift the other day on a Windows 10 machine. Doesn't work anymore, but really, the way. doesn't yeah. work. Nope, doesn't work. Don't worry, guys. We'll be getting to 360 soon. This is we're just recreating the the feeling of watching this press conference at the time where you're sitting there like anticipating 360. And there, oh, there's the uh, the original Xbox version of Tomb Raider Legend, which has so many ports, right, John? Yeah, yeah, and. That, I think that version is actually 60 FPS, it's just that footage wasn't... Unlocked frame rate or 60 No, I think it was pretty much 60. Wow. Was that, I need to double check. Was that Shrek game they just showed, the original Deferred no. Engine one? Or oh, was that no, a, no, no, the, no, that was something else. Oh no. Hey, it's Star Wars Battlefront 2, what is this, 2017? <laughs> <laughs> no loot boxes in that one though. All these hard cuts though are getting me a little sick. Okay. Wow, that was that was a long montage to do uh, for this early in the conference. For a doomed console. <laughs> what a fantastic lineup of games that truly takes advantage of today's Xbox. Exactly. And it doesn't stop there. In 2006, we'll continue to market and sell Xbox consoles. This is kind of crazy. I mean, saying that in 2006, we're going to continue to market and support the original Xbox, mm. which uh, we kind of know doesn't wasn't end up happening. really the case. I mean, I guess the when I don't know when they actually discontinued it, but I feel like 2005 is the end of original Xbox, and everybody went full in on 360, yeah. which that's kind of what we wanted, right? I mean, usually between generations, you do want the focus of all games coming out. Cross-gen games. Oh, are backwards compatible. Out. Yeah, that's that's. They a announced big, that. I forgot about this. That's a big deal. Obviously, it is a, a, a software emulation in comparison to the original PS3 implementation. Correct. Mm -hmm, that's all right. Yeah. Um, and but it has some advantages. Like I do think, in spite of some of the problems with slowdown in some games that eventually do end up happening with it, like getting like four times MSAA in Xbox original Xbox games, I think that was a great awesome thing. I mean, it's thing. a cool idea, but it doesn't work well. A lot of the games that are supported don't work correctly. Like you mentioned originally, uh, Shenmue. The visual, there's visual bugs, like crash bugs, like weird performance issues. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't work well. It's it's a neat idea, but it doesn't work well, and they didn't explain it well here. We'll hit the stores this year as we orchestrate the industry's first three-region console. If you think about backwards compatibility now, they've got a team of 100 testers that capture basically an entire playthrough of the game to check that everything is okay. That's Obviously, right. Obviously, that wasn't happening at the time. And also, of course, um, there wasn't the same level of scrutiny. And I can't That's help, true. And I can't help but feel partly responsible. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of the things he just announced there is uh, that this is the first uh, worldwide like launch where everybody's launching around the same time. And that's... Interesting, actually, because I was in Japan when this thing launched, and uh, there wasn't it wasn't that popular. But it was interesting to see them really try to make this system like take off. There, they got a lot of Japanese support. They had like they built like a big showcase cafe to to let people experience 360. That's where I first played on the plasma TV. Wow! And when I eventually went back to the states, I bought a plasma TV like almost <laughs> immediately. So did, did you have a Japanese 360? No, I didn't buy it there at the time because it was still kind of region locked. Right. Uh -huh. Also, here we go. This is uh, Team Ninja's Xbox 360 debut, which is Dead or Alive 4. Also a gorgeous looking game, though. Which, at the time, I think people were a little bit underwhelmed, but looking back, it's kind of an almost timeless look. Like, it's very clean and nice and 60 FPS. It's a good looking game. Now, is this the one that had the exclusive characters, or am I, or am I thinking of the, another one? Exclusive characters? You must be thinking of a different one. Because this, this was only on 360. This is only on 360, okay. Yeah. This is an exclusive. This is when Itagaki was really into Xbox, and he was still in charge of Team Ninja. <laughs> 
Yeah, the certain aspects of the physics haven't aged particularly well. Yeah. I mean, they move at least. That's impressive enough. <laughs> they clip with everything, uh, but they're there. The cloth and the, the flower petals, though, look pretty cool still. Yeah, that, that, that still looks great. And you, it's hard to see like separate cloth on arms and hands in games even nowadays. And this, this is stylized enough where I feel like you could still sell a game that looks like this today. Like, it'd be okay. They still, they still are, aren't they? Yeah, yeah they are. I mean, King of Fighters 14. Yeah, oh my uh, gosh, yeah. Uh, the water, though, here with the uh, the ripple action and two, just coming off your water video, John. It looks good. That looks good. I mean, they didn't seem to reflect the characters, though, interestingly yeah. enough. Lots of background um, detail and geometry in, in this uh, environment as well for the time. So this game had a great demo. Yeah, it did. And uh, I actually used that for testing capture equipment, real-time compression of video streams. Oh, that's a good. This is a good test because yeah. it's such a fast-paced thing. Yeah. 60 FPS. Yeah, and a nightmare to compress. So for a good test for uh, the, the codecs we were using at the time. What's the one disappointment for me is when they first revealed screenshots of this, they showed I guess what were photo mode shots with like a per-object motion blur. Oh, and really? Was, yeah, and uh, I was expecting that in the game. Because I also saw like Perfect Dark Zero had that. And I was thinking, wow, they're doing per object motion blur that in a fighting game, but it wasn't actually in the game. Wow. Tekken 6 would be the one to really pull that off. I like the first shader on his coat there. Uh, yeah. Um, oh my gosh. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> 2005. This, yeah. Maybe. This wouldn't fly as well these days, I don't think. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, this, this, is part, this is part, of the, part of the fun. This is what the DOA is all about, man. Yeah. Look at all the, uh, this, wow, there's a lot of detail in that scene there. I do like this series, though. It's, it's a really fun fighting game. There's a lot of variety in the backgrounds and in the, you know, the shading techniques. And it, it was Log 60, wasn't it? Yeah. There's some interesting mix of CGI there in there, I think, yeah. as well. Because it's, that doesn't look like the real-time stuff. This is definitely... This is, though, with the, the, the reflections on the ground, which look this rather wonderful. Xenon launch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still using the code name. But like yeah. here with the per-object blur that John was talking about earlier, that's not in the real game. This is an amusingly long uh, trailer. By the way, did you see that the flags in the back on that one scene were at half rate? Oh, but no, I did not notice that. Well, that's just... Was that in the final game? I don't know. We need to double check. Maybe I should do a retrospective on Dead or Alive sometime. Because it, it was always like a super technically advanced series. Well, Team Ninja were, you know, one of the, the great tech houses of the time, weren't yeah. they? Yeah, Ninja Gaiden for the uh -huh. original Xbox oh, is one of my favorite games for that whole generation. Runs still pretty all right, I it's think. awesome. Yeah. It, they, they haven't done the Ninja Gaiden 2 on um, Back Compat for Xbox One, have they? No, they should because it would, the it would fix the stairs battle. <laughs> oh yeah, the low, slowing down on that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> among other things, but it really needs a res boost as well because it's sub seven twenty on three hundred and sixty. Mm. This is an epic, epic. trailer. It's, it's long. so long. Now is this something else or is this still? No, this is still DOA. Oh my gosh! So in the context of the times, the the direct comparison would obviously be the previous game on PS two and Dreamcast. Yeah, and uh, we hadn't had any other next-gen fighters. Like, I think the next day or whenever it happened, Sony would have a, a little announcement slide for Tekken 6, and then Tekken 5 Dark Resurrection would receive a PS3 port with 1080p support at launch, but that was still based on a PS2 game. So this was like our first glimpse at a, effectively a next-gen fighter. And because of the style, people were kind of a initially a little disappointed, but... Because again, again, it wasn't going for straight photorealism, but right. like it's, yeah. I think it works. It looks good to me. Oh, I still All right, so here we are. Jay Allard's on stage. This is when it gets real. Look at those ray trace reflections, by yeah. the way. <laughs> I just can't stop thinking about ray tracing these days, man. It's got a couple on his head. I want to dress like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> with the best game creators in the world and arm them with great software, amazing hardware, and a world-class service. There's been a lot of discussion recently about when the next generation of video games begins. It begins right now. It begins this year. And you just... It begins right now, this year. <laughs> I love it. He's so confident. It's awesome. 
think there's but, a lot of confidence. But didn't this had, uh, didn't this lead on to um, Sony saying next gen begins when we say it begins? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How wrong they were. If you go back and read some of the interviews of the time, the the animosity is is palpable. Whereas these days things are a lot more professional. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I do kind of miss these days, and honestly, I miss these presenters. Though I will say, Phil Spencer does a really nice job. He's great. He's a great presenter. But these guys were like Xbox to me. Yeah, they do represent that era to me in my brain as well. Um, I I do actually remember this part of the conference now, uh, post the dead or a live section and definitely being extremely hyped up because we didn't have any idea at this point necessarily what hardware is in there and I was coming off of PC at the time and having an original Xbox and I expected huge leaps and we'll, we'll see in a minute but I think they're a bit tamer with the way the games look but the hardware itself though is extremely forward-looking in so many ways. Yeah and you know this goes back to that thing I mentioned on the Sony one where they were working with IBM alongside Sony, unbeknownst to Sony, to uh, create the tri-core CPU in the 360. Mm -hmm. But it was really the AMD, well, I guess still ATI. At this point, yeah. Uh, GPU that was really forward-looking. Well, you know, if you look back, we were still mostly on single-thread, single-core PC yeah. CPUs. Dual-core was just starting to appear. This thing has got three cores six threads 3.2 gigahertz 3.2 gigahertz yeah, wow yeah. i feel uh, like yeah. in it's in order so it's not out of order so it's like programmability is different but still sure. very i mean if you saw that kind of they were pushing yeah they were pushing in a direction that it was literally going to be the future now simd is like or simd is like the future right now mm. everyone's still trying right. to take advantage of six to eight and this thing shipped with six threads, and they were all relatively usable in comparison to, I would say, the first couple years of the PS3, where you had to change your entire kind of paradigm of thinking about how you were going to program a game to take advantage of its complete power. Well, here you had, you know, all the cores were relatively simple and mm -hmm. uh, similar to each other, and I guess you just would have to come up with a threading model at that point. Proper, yeah. proper next-gen uh, GPU, unified shaders. Yes. Wasn't even a PC part available on the market that no. was the, that spec at the time. And even the way they listed the, the shader spec, I think it's um, 48 of their uh, combined, you know, uh, pixel shader, vertex shader cores, um, which at our time on PC, we were used to seeing, like, pipes, like 16-pixel pipelines and things like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> just even the wording was so different, uh, and it's really felt like the future at that point. They were also fabbing on 19 nanometer, which the PC GPUs weren't no. quite there yet. So yeah, I mean, I think it's fair to say that this was a leap over what you could do on a PC at the time. Yeah, we, we weren't even using the term nanometer on PC GPUs. We were still using the, the, the I forget the name of the moniker before it, the U... Uh, I don't know. It's the UM. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, UM, it's the whatever UM. it is. <laughs> um, so yeah, just a new process, a new everything. So this is the product he's always dreamed of creating, and it will fill the living room back with people. So I think, again, this is uh, essentially their second shot at Xbox Live. Mm -hmm. They had already done a, a pretty reasonable job with uh, the original Xbox Live on, on the original Xbox. And it's weird to think, you look at what they do here, they actually accomplish a lot of things that it took Sony years to get close to. And they're doing things that Nintendo still doesn't do. Mm, yeah. So, like, 2005, they're ahead of Nintendo now. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> the, that is the scary truth. And, uh, you know, the other thing, of course, is that, you know, they had the uh, other areas of Microsoft to tap into, so, into, so that it was using a really simplified, stripped-back Windows NT core. Right. Uh, that just used 32 megabytes of memory. They had a huge memory advantage over... Sony for much of the generation, just in terms of what the background uh, system allocation was. They really did so much right here. They learned so much from the original Xbox. Yeah, they did. And you can see, I mean, he's talking now about like the creation of the physical box and the hardware together, and it's true. I mean, the original Xbox was an ugly beast. Yeah, and also and this is a massive very, too. Yeah. I mean, this thing is, I think, in terms of, like, its width, it's not that much smaller in width than the original Xbox, but its density and just the way it feels in your hand is way different. 
and this this is actually this was genius the wireless controller thing especially if you use the battery pack like this was the first console where you have a wireless controller that you could then plug into the console and use wired to charge yeah and then you unplug again once it's charged like the whole concept was really really great also okay cameo cameo Oh, I have such fond memories of this wow. game. Wow, this, uh, so this is interesting. The frame rate is really, really low. Oh, terrible. but he's opening up the, the dash in-game. Obviously something that you did not, you were not able to do on the original Xbox, kind of getting this OS-like feature while you're in-game itself. You had to pretty much uh, only access these UIs before game in OG Xbox games. Gosh, it's so quaint. I love that. Well, uh, it actually looks like a console, you know, like a kind it does. of... Um, yeah. It's geared, I mean, there is these media and system abilities that you see here, but it's the first opening page is about your games and the game you're currently playing. And oh my gosh, gamer score. The thing is, though, you look at this interface and you remember the time that 2005 was in the sense that everything was going for that rendered soft look where there was a lot of shading mm -hmm. on like, like boxes and icons and stuff. And yeah. you know, since then, we've obviously gone very flat with UI elements, but... I mean, Windows XP itself was kind of built with this type of aesthetic in mind, right? Oh, yeah, uh, completely. Or the, what was the name of the Windows XP add-on uh, that changed it? Media Center. Media Center Edition looks almost exactly like the original uh, Xbox 360 Blade interface here. You're right. Uh, so, yeah, this is cool. He's, he's going through all these, like, elements of the dashboard to showcase, like, the way it's connected and how you're always online and... And essentially, like, you know, being able to interact with your friends. Mm -hmm. This was really new at the time. And it's amazing that this was launched. <laughs> Again, you look at Nintendo now and it's like, oof. <laughs> <laughs> Just even knowing what your friends are doing online. I don't even remember if the original Steam release with its friends list function told you what they were doing necessarily. So this is very ahead of the time. Of course, I, so I do want to stop, though, and think about, like, you know how carefully planned these conferences are. Like, how do they decide on those specific usernames yes. for that? Well, Sniper Monkey is just one step away from Sniper Wolf, which is the name of every teenage boy, I think, on Xbox Live. Yeah, underscore, at lowercase x, x, capital oh. X, lowercase <laughs> x. Sniper Wolf, x, x. I and I also wonder if there's some choreography here. I'm going to sit down in a kind of loose and hip manner yeah. To, to, to demonstrate this Blades interface. Oh, the Xbox Live silver and gold. Silver, silver and gold. gold. <laughs> <laughs> you can't Cornelius. Oh my goodness. So what is it now? Gold or nothing? Gold or nothing. <laughs> gold or nothing. <laughs> I mean, remember the system also launched without a hard drive as one of the SKUs? Right. Yeah. Um, yep. I don't know what its selling numbers were, but... Uh, definitely got the hard drive version at launch because the the idea of you know installing partial games into your Xbox 360 was a big deal for me. I didn't want to have exactly. to be like fiddling with memory cards, which there wasn't uh, really. There, okay, when this launched, there wasn't installation. You couldn't install a game I, at all, and the system's hard drive was 20 gigabytes. I thought mm. it was partial installed, though. No, like certain no, no, stuff. no, 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 no. It, you, it had a cache on the hard drive. It was drive. a cache. That's it was what just it was? like okay. the original Xbox, which also had a cache. Mm. But you never actually installed anything. That's right. And once they introduced the installation capability later on, it actually broke certain games. Or not necessarily broke them, but they would possibly load slower. I think Halo 3 was one of those. Yeah. yeah. And there were some titles that didn't install, like Crackdown initially. That's right. You couldn't install it. Yeah. Yeah, it's like they designed the game streaming, uh, stream loading around the disk seat times, I think. Oh, see, this is where you choose, like, your zone or something. <laughs> so this is like the hardcore gamer here. <sighs> Striker. He's in the underground zone. He's in the underground zone. Wow. <sighs> For gamers like Striker. <laughs> I only think of the Mortal Kombat 3 character. Now you see that there's, there is a discussion here in terms of, you know, what is next gen at this point. Obviously there's the tech upgrade, but they're spending yeah. a lot of time here on the social aspect, um, which would prove to be massively popular. And obviously when we move into this generation, it kind of evolved with the share button on PlayStation 4. Yep. Mm -hmm. But it all begins here and, uh, it, it, you know, this is, a, this is huge stuff really. The idea of achievements in general, I mean, people play games uh, just to like platinum them, uh, you know, on their Sony machines and things like that. This was a starting point of that. And even later down the line, Steam added achievements. Yep. 
uh, which I oh, didn't oh, go for. Oh. Guys, Velocity Girl. <laughs> Velocity Girl. This, he specifically said this is like for the casual gamer. And they call it the zone, the R and R zone. Oh no! Jeez. Wow. Uh, I, I guess the f this point is also pretty but, contentious, fractioning up. But oh, why is her rep only two stars? Oh, you would, you would <laughs> imagine such a friendly face would get such much higher rep. <laughs> wow. So he, he does the. Did the zone concept continue on? I don't remember. I don't, it I don't even know if it's all. even around anymore. And I barely actually remember interacting with the zone other than choosing it when setting yeah. up your profile. I don't remember it having much interaction in the games. Oh, the so solitaire. Well, and is that an icon for Hexic HD? Yeah, it's yes, Hexic it HD. HD. Now, wasn't that supplied on the system? It was. Marble oh. Blast, though. Marble Blast is That's great. a good looking game, actually. Marble still. Blast Ultra. Yeah. Oh. Oh, so well, it's the marketplace. This is the original. Um, so another big part store. of the early 360 generation is, if I recall, a lot of games were almost forced to have demos, were they not? As part of yep. launching on the Xbox a lot of them 360. Did. Well, uh, okay, let's correct that. Okay, yeah. Xbox Live Arcade games had to have demos forced. That yes. was a requirement. Yeah. But regular games, you could you could put up a demo, but it was definitely not required. I, I, but the funny thing is, I remember so many games from that era still having yeah, demos. And uh, just a few years back, trying to see what it looked like, I loaded up Battlefield Modern Combat 2, I think it's called. Yeah. Uh, which you could still download at least three years ago from the original demo from this era. So it was still working, and it, I bought games as a result of that. Well, you know, the, the whole oh. demo culture was completely different at that point. So this is, this is interesting, by the way. He's talking about creating user content and selling it on their marketplace. Oof. He just said she may never pick up a controller, but she can sure make a skate park or a t-shirt and shell, sell it on our store. Uh, they're preempting the Steam marketplace at that point then. Wow. But I'm not even sure. Did, did this actually I, come to pass? I don't think time? it happened. I don't recall any kind of... Uh, either. There is the thing, uh, not selling, I don't think, but creation of like user things that were uploaded. You could do it for, I believe, the Forza series, like creating decals for the cars yep. using a shape-based like uh, editor, and then you could upload them to the, the oh. gamer marketplace and uh, have other users download them. I don't know if some of them could cost. I don't remember that. But so he just kind of mentioned something that probably would prove to be a mistake is video chat being a big thing yeah no <laughs> that um yeah he didn't yeah you know <laughs> we know where things go, it's go there a, a proud tradition going all the way up to the playstation camera on the ps4 launch yeah <laughs> and he wants to see it all on his high def tv xbox 360 is perfect for beat builder because it works with everything so he's just, it's interesting he's just going through like a use case scenario for each type of, as he says, gamer. Yeah, uh, once again, someone with low rep, not very well liked. Whoa, iPod, PSP, what, PSP? Digital Hello. camera, MP3 player. There's the Windows Media Center remote. I did take advantage of that a couple of times just to test it out. I used to plug an iPod into my 360 yeah, yeah, to yeah. listen to it through the sound system in my house. The ultimate digital entertainment amplifier. <laughs> wow. Oh, he just said it's a progressive scan DVD player. Big deal. Big deal. Not shipping. Kind of. I mean, <laughs> PS2 and Xbox the original were also, well, some, some PS2s. Yeah. Later models were progressive scan capable. Wasn't great, though. And of course, via an add on, it, <laughs> it evolved into a progressive high definition DVD player. Oh, HD DVD. <laughs> That's right. Can't forget it. Oh, there my. it is. There's Media Center. Yeah, I mean, it looked exactly like this also on the Windows XP exactly. version. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I did some of the streaming with. Well, I want to see what the top album... Three, Three doors, doors down. down. Oh, my goodness. He'll be able to bring this entire experience to life in his living room. The actual, the actual media playback facilities of the console in terms of what, the, what it should have been capable of doing. I mean, I couldn't run 720p60 content from the dashboard, but I think I could run it from the extender, the media extender. Yeah. There's some weird stuff going on there. They eventually uh, sorted that out there. Yeah, and you could have like background music playing already mm -hmm. at this point while you're doing other stuff. Terminator 2, is that the HD version, you think? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
Gosh, the old VHS commercial for this when it came out on VHS, and they're like positioning it as the greatest movie ever made in the history of all humankind. <laughs> you may as well stop making anything creative because this movie is better than anything. And that description can be applied directly to Terminator 2 Judgment Day, the most spectacular film ever created. Being a part of a movie like Terminator 2 is the ultimate thrill for a performer. Now, Terminator 2 is about to become the ultimate performer for you. Have plenty of copies on hand because Live's TV ad campaign will have every renter awaiting street date. Get set for the biggest and most exciting event in the history of video. I mean, it still holds up. It is up. really good, though. Also, look at the cast, uh, the frame rate of this uh, football cast. This, oh, yeah. this looks higher oh, than... Oh, you just got a game invite from Stryker while watching football. Typical striker. <laughs> that was way smoother than the actual dash uh, rollout feature there. Yeah, a bit laggy. Uh, they show cameo just for a bit. So a lot of like ladder conferences down the line that we would see. Uh, not a lot of game focus yet. More on the community aspects and you know the media capabilities, which is a big part of these new consoles at this point. Gosh, did you see by the way they had the the power button lights above the stage? Oh no! I Which didn't. imagine if one of those had turned red. <laughs> this was before. Oh my gosh! We have to come to that at some point. Obviously, that's gosh. A, that's that's a, uh, yeah. Striker. Striker. Velocity girl. Beat builder. We're checking off the list. Sniper monkey. Sniper monkey. <laughs> Striker once again looks like Sam Whitmer. He just is in every video and every video game these days. So thus far, this is very different from Sony, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I, th they showed like Dead or Alive four and like a billion original Xbox games, and now it's just like this. Let's build up less charts. Uh, they already oh. started with charts. Whoa. Oh. Okay. So this recording is missing something. Hmm. A sketch. A sketch. So perhaps some kind of comedy offering. Yeah. All right, well, so be it. Looks like he's about to enter the twilight zone down there. The stage. Oh, was Bill Gates was on screen. Oh. Oh. We've got unbelievable technology, and this unbelievable technology is going to light up the imagination. So he's starting to get to the technology now, at last. So maybe we'll see some more games shortly. There's a lot more to it than pure computing power. With XNA, we're going to satisfy the... Oh, he's talking about XNA. Also, yeah, like a development platform on Windows to make both Windows eventually less so at, uh, at launch, but Xbox 360 downloadable games. And yeah, I mean, it lasted for a good long while, XNA, and it was only discontinued, I want to say, towards the latter end of the Xbox 360's lifespan, maybe a little bit after. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, some great games were built using XNA. I think Fez was? Fez is XNA, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Originally it was XNA. But it might have switched later on. Yeah, when they they switched, did some of the they, yeah, I think they switched it. A little bit of trivia for you here, but the Xbox One back compat doesn't support XNA. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Interesting. I'm, I'm pretty. Do you think that Marble Madness HD is using XNA as well? Oh, you mean Marble Blast? Marble Blast. I keep calling it, call it Marble Madness. Maybe. Um, I'm just curious. Turn the entire world into gamers. And that's how we're going to reach a billion. Now, of course, we built the Xbox <laughs> Launch a mobile this, phone. That's the, right, that's the right response. <laughs> that are shaping our culture. One of those is the urge to personalize. Oh, it's the, okay. This is personalization. That's right. You could change the different colors and... Mm -hmm. I think I just kept to the straight silver. Yeah, same. Yeah. So it's fascinating, isn't it? Because Sony did like a kind of crazy and fantastic vision of the future of gaming and uh, essentially Microsoft is showing their front end. Well, in a way, they're actually showing the future of gaming. Well, quite. The actual future. <laughs> what was actually delivered, sure. Yeah, and yeah. lots, uh, also in comparison to the Sony one, just the emphasis on numbers, bar graphs, and tech demos kind of front-loaded into the conference after them talking about the legacy of the PS2. Uh, it's radically different in that aspect. Like this is just this is how you use it. Oh my gosh, um, oh hair club, uh, hair club for men. Wow. They're welcoming Peter Moore. Oh no! Come on. Uh, well, they are two men of a certain <laughs> age with a certain level of hair. Um, uh. What is going on? <laughs> 
So to begin to understand the promise of the future of video games. The looseness of the pants. Exactly, there's some impressive trousering going on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Incredible cloth physics. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, high hatchies pantaloons <laughs> Deckham. It's been called the Zen of running. In the HD era, we're gonna deliver the Zen of gaming. He's gonna deliver the Zen of gaming. The Zen of gaming. Okay. So unprecedented everything, basically. We'll see. And they'll deliver storylines and gameplay so compelling that it will feel like living a lucid dream. The result, it's a state where you achieve the perfect mind-body equilibrium. He's really hyping this up as being like, it's like the perfect Zen state of gaming that you will enter. And he's walking over. Just grabs the controller. Okay. It's an extension of your body. Years later, he would throw it out the window while not <laughs> more in favor of Kinect. <laughs> the Don Matrick years, the dark years of Xbox. Yeah, geez. Who needs tactile things when you could wave your hand? Have access to the ideal canvas on which to express their vision. Let's begin by stepping inside the incredible world of Lost Odyssey. Oh. A new game under development from the They're league. showing Lost Odyssey. This was a huge yeah. deal at the time. Cause time. So, so Sakaguchi, who f creator of Final Fantasy, was basically started Mistwalker, and his projects were on Xbox. So how does this game play, would you oh, say? Oh, I love this game. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's a, it has the one that has the amazing intro where it switches to yeah. real time, and you're just kind of like, wow, this is real time. This may as well be a Final Fantasy game in terms of actual gameplay mechanics. And not only that, this has improved dramatically with Xbox One backwards compatibility. Oh, yeah? Because it had pretty severe slowdown on loading is issues on the 360. And on the Xbox One, loading is like lightning fast, and the performance is perfect now. Is this their own custom engine? No, it's Unreal Engine 3. Oh, wow, okay. So this is one of the first outings of Unreal Engine 3 on console. Did it come out before Gears of War? No, it came okay. out in like 2008, I think. Oh, so quite a bit afterwards. Okay. Maybe 2007, but I can't remember exactly. But it was definitely after Gears. But it, it's a so one that of the things looks, they did. See how they're in this yeah. picture and picture stuff. Like that's not actually from the game there, but this is a game that did like the twenty four, you know, the TV show yeah, yeah. style thing where they would open multiple windows to show different perspectives in three D. And were they also done in real time? Those All of them were real time. I mean, at an engine at the time, being forward rendered, it made it much more possible than it would be in a modern yeah, exactly. third one. Um, but. Still, you know, that kind of cinematic presentation. And what they showed, just a second, of these couple in-game shots, you know, they had, like, aliasing that was rather visible, like, with the shadow maps also being static. It looked Unreal Engine 3, and so we're already seeing a tiny bit of in-game things, but a lot of that was still CGI, presumably. Yeah. yeah. There's not that much CGI in this game, though. When, it, when you play so it. So to yeah. create experiences that transform reality, well, that's... that's really I did sample the... I sampled it again recently for testing, and that intro you mentioned, where it goes from CGI to real time, where he steps off the still corpse or whatever, freaking works. Yeah, like it absolutely looks like you, it's really difficult to see the transition <laughs> in this. You're like paying super close attention. It's super impressive. That is awesome. It's not even a cut. Yeah, it's, it's just like, like transition from within the one camera shot. Anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing. That's right. Oh gosh, but weren't they like? Making 4x MSAA sort of like an yeah. initial requirement. This is yeah. I think I think it might have been 2x at 720p. Oh, 2x. Yeah. Yep. Uh, for any lower, yeah, because to fit in with the um, ED RAM. Yeah. If you're using tiling. Yeah. MSAA made a lot of sense actually. Yeah, and this is once again in the era before deferred rendering yep. was at all of things. Correct. So everyone was assuming that everything's forward rendered and. MSAA would be a simple matter and requiring it or essentials as for the game. I think it's neat. Uh, I think actually what that is more important for a console is presume actually frame rate requirements yeah. as this generation would show. It would have been nice to have frame rate requirements for some games. Uh, but uh, a different time, so the expectation that all games would have good anti-aliasing and then you have uh, games like Halo launching with none at all, you yeah. know, flagship title later down the line. And they were launch titles as well. You yeah, know, Project, launch, Project Gotham was Project sub-native. Gotham. And I, I'm pretty sure even Cameo is not forward rendered. I, I mean, if it's using the, a similar engine to the Perfect Dark one, is oh, it not? I think so. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, Perfect Dark was definitely deferred. Yeah. 
So that's the thing, though, as well. Like, there wasn't a lot of options at the time for anti-aliasing in general. Mm -hmm. Like, post-process AA didn't exist yet. No. I mean, they're just, you know, MSAA was kind of the way. Yeah. So this is Project Gotham 3. Man, this is a very good game. Mm Mm-hmm. And this this is actually the game I think that looked the most impressive out of everything they would show or that would appear in year one. Well, I guess the first, like in 2005. Yeah, the original. It's also launch. one of the games where when you did screenshot dumps from the dev kit, it actually, the, the screenshots were actually at native resolution. So this was oh, yeah. kind of like where people started to realize that games weren't running at a native 720p, that they were That's right. Lower. Ooh. So PGR three is sub native from seven twenty. Yeah, it's like six hundred p or something. Yeah, I don't have the figures to hand, but yeah, obviously they had uh, some kind of uh, potentially a performance issue, potentially a tiling issue, but uh, it sure looked good, didn't it? Yes, it did. Their texture work was sublime, and it had the nice per pixel motion blur. Yeah, that's the thing I remember most about it: downloading the demo and checking that out and being just like, whoa. That motion blur looks great. <laughs> you see, the thing I remember the most is the cone challenges. <laughs> they, they love their cones. They do. Gotta get your kudos. <laughs> I mean. Life begins at 170. Not in that game. With those cones. <laughs> <laughs> so how important is spectator mode? Spectator Picture mode? video game racing season on Xbox Live. Oh. By Xbox Live? Spectator? Oh, it did have a spectator mode, didn't it? I dimly recall. 250,000 people pay 10 bucks each. To sign Didn't it have like a sort of continuing ticker tape of stuff that was going on? So he's talking about like people putting in money into a pot and on like finalists like battling for like a million dollar prize. Uh, like people like watching this. I mean that it's a little different but it if you look at the way the international is set up for Dota these days you're People are putting money into pots for online video yeah. games. Actually, you know what? What he's things. talking about here is exactly what we see today. Yeah. Like it's, which is interesting. I don't think this would happen anytime early in the Xbox 360's life, but yeah. what he's talking about is very much the future. Yeah. Quest to create realistic environments. Oh. They're always pushing the platform to limit. And now with Xbox 360, they have all of the horsepower they need to deliver an experience that will place you completely in the moment. Tom Clancy's. Oh, it's uh, Tom Clancy's. Ghost. He just said Ghost, Re- Wait, Ghost Recon 3. This would be uh, Advanced Warfare, right? Yeah. Or Advanced Warfighter. Graw. Graw. <laughs> which I looked at recently for the back combat thing, which That's right, yeah. seems to be sort of able to hit 60 frames per second on Xbox One. I remember that on 360, if you went to like Night Vision, it would run at 60. Now, partially, this is uh, <laughs> this is fake. This is fake. Um, but the actual game looks better than this, I think. <laughs> I guess I guess it's for this. It's mainly the camera angles and the yeah. inability to go into first person on the Xbox 360 version of the game. I'm pretty sure it's all third person. It is. Yeah, unlike the PC version, which is only first person. That was so different. It's so it's weird that they it's a decided worse looking game too. It, it has a lot worse, but it has physics. That's right. <laughs> Which, you could get the dedicated physics card. You could get the dedicated physics card to play that. Uh, but the, I guess the the thing about this that is kind of BSE is one the presentation and the camera angles. But in terms of in game graphics, uh, the game, the real game itself, ends up looking better. I think it has more real time shadows. Yeah, than more this. shadows, better lighting in general. This exact scene here happens in the final game but obviously it looks you know like the game mm-hmm. but this is interesting that, the, that they're showing it like this because this game would ship in like march of 2006 so about nine months or nine or ten months after this presentation yeah and the game was on shelves and they're already showing one they're changing the name too and they're also changed they could have probably arguably showed off normal gameplay for that unless they the, unless it. they were still like in serious optimization <laughs> mode and they just weren't running smooth enough well, this was a cross-gen game, so the, oh. qu- the question is to what extent it actually existed on oh. 360. There's, there's a Graw. There's, there's no Graw on older systems. I'm pretty sure there is. There might be a, some other Ghost Recon game, but it's not, <laughs> it's not Advanced Warfighter. God, that would look hideous if it does exist. I can't remember it, though. Um, oh, NBA 2K6. 
I think this is where they show off all the uh, the cloth physics. Yeah, uh, still impressive on the shorts, yeah. I think. Yeah. Visual concepts, all right. Oh, yeah. Speaking of uh, companies you don't hear a lot about, uh, seeing Bizarre Creations logo earlier is a little sad. I know. Yeah. Here we go. Reflections. So, yeah, yeah. Interestingly, using an unlit version of the scene, it looks like, too. Yep. Player some, reflections. Yeah, but some frame rate issues here. I mean, is this game 60 or 30? I actually don't know. Uh, but it's like switching up and around in frame rate pretty. That's that 60. looks good, though. Yeah. It was on PS2 and Xbox. Wow, okay, so Richard just informed us from the newsroom <laughs> <laughs> that there is, in fact, Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter on PlayStation 2 and original Xbox. I can't imagine what that looks like at all. If wow. it even has models, I, I <laughs> no, but What uh, is it? Yeah, I, I mean, it, if the, all the Ghost Recons on consoles were much like the PC versions till that point in time, just first-person games with no view model. Uh, so if oh. it is a third-person game, that'd be interesting. Here comes first person though. Yeah. Perfect dark zero. Yeah, not a. Oh. Let's see. Oh, actually, I think this is they're gonna show cameo instead. Which is fascinating because a pretty much complete build of this exists on the original Xbox. They basically finished the game and then they re kind of recreated it for Xbox 360. Let's see what it looks like. Because this game does run at a completely stable 30 FPS in the final version. It looks great. Yeah, this is much choppier than the final game would be. This game went through so much iteration. Starting out on GameCube, then original Xbox, and then the 360. Where it had lots of parallax occlusion maps. Yeah, this one doesn't look to have it in this it doesn't, preview I'm not seeing video. it here. I'm not seeing it here either, but that, that's like the defining visual look of this game yep. when you play it nowadays. Gosh, look um, how choppy that is. Yeah, and the funny thing is with all these orcs or goblins or whatever they are, that, that's the shot I remember most thinking, yep. wow, that's a lot of characters on screen. And this running much better in the end game is a pretty impressive feat considering how this is extremely yep. choppy in the feed right now. I wonder what the state of the 360 dev kits were at this point. Well, some of them were actually on display at E3 that year. Oh, okay. So, for example, I played Need for Speed Most Wanted, which must surely be uh, popping up later in this. And it was, you know, it literally right in front of you was a Macintosh Power PC unit running the game. That was the dev kit. But there were still um, debug units that looked like retail hardware on show at the show i dimly recall that call, oh. call of duty 2 was running on uh, on such a unit see call of duty 2 is interesting then because they targeted 60 frames per second at launch mm -hmm. and it would kind of get there but it was a double buffer game so it would drop to 30 constantly i think it's fixed on xbox one BC. Yeah, pretty much, and I'm, I'm pretty sure, well, it was on the standard Xbox One, far superior, and uh, yeah. it should be even smoother still on the X. Yeah, and but this I, is before Call of Duty got big, by the way. Yeah, this is still, I, I would say, like, at this point, Call of Duty is a PC, ga like, PC franchise, franchise uh, with the original Call of Duty making a lot of headroom, being a pretty big game yeah. on PC, and Call of Duty 2... Um, I remember being highly impressed with a lot of the things like Z-Feathered Smoke or just even the extensive use of normal maps on characters, but still very much so looking like Call of Duty 1 in animation yeah. and uh, I guess just general gameplay mechanics. This frame rate is very, very yeah, poor very, in this very demo. Very, poor in this demo, yeah. This is, again, it really feels like Microsoft is just, even though the software is clearly not ready, they're just showing it anyway and you accept it for what it is. Mm -hmm. And this is the opposite of what Sony would do. I mean, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that it was running a lot more smoothly actually on the booth. The so maybe this was just an, a trailer made yeah. for the build. Yeah. But I, why would? I, mean, I wonder what the thinking was at the time, though. I mean, that they're showing off things that are running at like single frame. Those were a couple single frame. Yeah. <laughs> this <laughs> looks <laughs> genuinely awful. Like, why not show just like some first person gameplay? Even I mean, this yeah, is they're, this they're is bad. Yeah, they're showing they're showing cropped uh, FOV zooms of a normal gameplay too on a couple of these. These are like the player yeah. camera with crop zoom. 
looking really, really bad. But this was a defining launch title. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was massive. It was awesome. I mean, there are even parts when you're playing the, the, the multiplayer in like split screen where you can see 60 FPS on each viewport still, even in the original version. I remember that. And throwing smoke grenades and seeing the frame rate tank. So this game and Need for Speed and Project Gotham, those were my launch titles. Yep. Oh, here we go. This is uh, Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Yeah. Being announced. And this is bef so. Morrowind on Xbox was reasonably popular, I think, but this is this is the moment where Bethesda Game Studios would really become uh, a powerful force on consoles. Yeah. Once again, like another, it's a switch of I guess gaming at the time due to the way these hardware launches were, where you could see PC games that l could run arguably in some cases maybe even better with the hardware on consoles at this point uh, coming there and making themselves known on consoles I would have never thought about playing Oblivion on anything other or an Elder Scrolls game other than on a PC but it's Xbox 360 port yeah I think this is holds a, up. this is a major moment this is almost like for me almost up there with Halo in but the a franchise FPS. yeah this is not uh, <laughs> how it actually ends up running but uh, look at that bloom just everything yep. bloom my goodness. But yeah, this is a this is a an, you know another example like Halo of a, a, a franchise that's traditionally PC only transitioning across to console and working. I still can't forgive a lot of the things that happened in the preview showing of this game. The the originally technological preview they showed before it came out showed off a lot of things that never ended up making it in, like the extensive use of parallax mapping and much higher poly models like, and even it looks like motion blur I on some thought, aspects um, parallax mapping made it in, in select scenes like really that very first room that you're in when you start the game is it I'm i have to load it up sure again that there is some there uh, we have to double check you'll that. have to double check for maybe maybe it was only on the pc version no, i don't no, remember no, i think it's even on xbox yeah this would be a great uh df retro by the way john yeah maybe so yeah this is a this I mean, was such an important moment. I have I have fond memories of the opening parts of the game, definitely, Same. very much so. Yeah. Hearing Patrick Stewart's uh, opening lines and everything like that, I think it's wonderful. Find him and close shut the jaws. The jaws of oblivion. <laughs> and then you get to your first oblivion gate and you realize what the game's going to be, I guess. Yep. <laughs> They're showing the system there with four controllers connected. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, indeed. Let me repeat that. An all-new, full-featured, next-generation RPG in the launch window. That's what... He said, yeah, in the launch window. And they were right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When did it launch? That was like, I think it was March 2006. Okay. Years of War. Here we go. It's a very wide window. <laughs> Exclusively for Microsoft Game Studios. And the so this is the game that uh, Epic says they used to convince Microsoft to double the system memory allocation. That's right. And it's hard to imagine 256 megabytes of RAM and lasting as long as the Xbox 360 did eventually end up lasting. The games would have looked radically different, I think, in the end. And it's grateful that Epic was able to convince Microsoft to extend the RAM. <laughs> he just said... This game is so scary that you will literally be afraid to pick up the controller. <laughs> the humans of Thera built a glorious civilization. See, the scenery here looks great. It looks like it's from the Unreal 3 tech demos. Yeah, the, there's... And the frame rate... Uh, frame rate gets pretty la yeah. low. Not to say that it is always amazing also in the release itself. But it was better than that. I mean, this pans were smooth, actually. Yeah. But, this is a game, though, that would end up looking a lot better in time. Mm -hmm. Like, the initial showings like this had a lot of rough edges. And it did improve, I feel. Or, like, the rim lighting on that. Yeah, I know, right? That's also some of the real-time shadows there. Yeah, those are great. Those are good. Um, the character models improved a lot yeah. in the final. Extinction. But just the general use of real-time lighting here is the biggest difference. Like, a lot of real-time shadows. Like, wow, that was... Yeah. I mean, this would be the game that would kind of define much of the generation in terms of technology. Yep. Mm -hmm. And of course, there was a UE3 demonstration on the PlayStation conference as well. I'm not sure. There it was. was. It was yeah. that uh, Unreal Tournament themed one. Yeah, I'm not sure it's quite as impressive as this one, though. 
that one had shadow maps, if I recall, though. Like, yeah. like once again, yeah. like this is like I think at some point in time, the early in the generation, they just realized that we're not going to be pushing Unreal Engine three titles right now with shadow maps, real time shadow maps, yeah. on uh, on a lot of surfaces. So they run decidedly worse. Additionally, we have many exclusives coming from powerhouse publishers and great partners such as THQ, Sega, Capcom, Namco. Naming off the third party partners here. Uh oh, there's one publishing partner that has not been represented on stage. They're responsible for some of the biggest franchises in the video game world. Hmm. Who can it be? Oh, Madden, NFL football. Okay, he's talking about EA. Yeah. Where he would eventually go and work. I am talking, of course, about electronic arts. And please welcome Don Matrick, the president oh, no. of EA World. Oh, no. No, no, no. <laughs> you know who this is. Here he comes. <laughs> it's oh yeah, it's Don Matrick, who would go onto the Sony stage like later that day. Yeah, the shape of things to come, everyone. Uh. Look how pleased he looks. Do we get to see the Madden trailer here? I don't know. More of a studio guy. Right. I'm just a studio guy. There'll be crazy things going on behind the scenes. So, for example, Sony had Fight Night. When, yeah, that's right. It's only at Fight Night. When we kind of suspect it probably only existed on 360 at this point. Yep. But if you don't mind, I'd like to introduce you to somebody... And there's no Fight Night in this, uh, in this presentation, is there? I don't recall. To, no. to Backpack Guy. He wants to introduce us to Backpack Guy? What? Whoa, watch out. Oh, oh my... Well, this is Konami 2010 levels of <laughs> interactivity. No, no, no. 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 Uh, what more her than Jay and I? God, let me well, tell this you. Is, is someone this who, is something. Is someone who doesn't know anything about this sport. Don't, don't, do I know him? Is he a character I, that we know? Look, okay, guys, if you're watching this, don't turn it off. I know most, <laughs> most people stop watching the press conference when Madden comes on. <laughs> well, not everyone. I know. Some of our good friends at US Gamer that are extremely passionate <laughs> about Madden. So this this one's for you guys. Just a deck. Oh wait, he just hit him a copy of is that Madden? Madden and I saw FIFA? Did I see underneath that? Would, would you own a console? Uh I got the Xbox. He's what got else? the Xbox. Okay. What's your favorite game? Uh it's called Madden. Oh, they asked him what his favorite game was, and he says Madden, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's going to make a deal. You get those Oakland Raiders back on that Super Bowl path. And the day that we launch Xbox 360, we will have a brand new Xbox 360. He's basically saying, if you, if you get the Raiders to the Super Bowl, we'll <laughs> give you an Xbox 360 for free. Uh, yeah. comes out. How generous. That's it. Hey, Robert's great. I know you get back to training camp. So did he get his Xbox? We should follow up on this. Did yeah. he actually get his Xbox? I have no idea. <laughs> this is the this is an important question. And, and did he have the arcade version or the one with a hard drive? <laughs> oh yeah, you probably got the arcade they, version they without cheap, the hard drive. They cheaped out on that. This is the largest development commitment that EA has ever made in support of a new console. Right now, we have more than twenty five EA titles. Well, I get okay. I guess in a way, this is I can see why they were. Pushing this as a big thing, EA was on Xbox, but they were primarily Sony focused yeah. at this time. I mean, they were so huge on the PlayStation Two. So coming up here at the launch of a new system and mm -hmm. you know doing the talk. Well, you know, EA was support from EA was seen to make or break your console, right? Because yeah, it did. the Dreamcast did not have it, and it was seen as kind of like you know one of the nails in yep. the coffin. Exactly. Is this also the year or the year before where the 2K NFL license uh, was kind of revoked or taken away or wasn't renewed, so you only had uh, NFL licensed games from EA at this point? Or was this still at a point where there was going to be other games covering American football? Oh, you know? I mean, I don't know if they actually hit... Because NFL 2K, 2K5 was the last great uh, 2K... NFL football. Game? I think this is when, right around the time when EA obtained the uh, NFL a license. Full license. So we're not even seeing. Yeah. What? Oh, he's gonna share some gameplay footage. He says. We'll see about that. Okay. From six titles. Okay. Followed by gameplay captured from Need for Speed Most Wanted. Mm. Let's see. Okay. 
obviously this is completely this, real. <laughs> this is the oh my gosh. <laughs> this is from the seven twenty. Whoa, that was something. Okay, that game is not sixty FPS. It was unlocked most wanted, yeah, I believe. Yeah, but yeah. it was really unstable. Yeah, and tore. Tiger, Tiger Woods. Woods. Is, I, that, okay, so it switched from a 60 FPS movement this, this shot. This is his 90s. This is... Oh my gosh, this music. Um, <laughs> some new metal. <laughs> Nothing makes me think about American sports like new metal. <laughs> Ooh, their NBA series had some rough time from here. Oh yeah, the Godfather. Father series. Remember games. when they first showed that initial demo, how amazing it looked? It does look actually then, really like, good. the actually, final game... Well, that, that was running at 60 frames per second, wasn't it? With Godfather. At it, was, it was not a 60 FPS game. No, it certainly wasn't. No. Look at that. Wow, that logo. I think you're also seeing a lot Whoa. of things from the time period in terms of... I, I really do think people joke about it all the time, but the extensive... View, this is The Madden trailer still deserves so much... Uh, People sh that doesn't look anything like games even look nowadays. No, in, a lot of the in terms of geometry, is worse. The, yeah, the animation is uh, really of obviously not great quality. But there's and that's trailers just an extensive use of bloom on so yep. many surfaces, where it doesn't just looks inappropriate almost. And of course, when Madden went cross-platform, PS3, 360, the initial one was 30 on the PS3 and 60 on the 360. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So this, I think, is a, an iconic launch title for the 360, Most Wanted. It's a shame about the performance, but it's still, it was a neat game at the time. It was uh, unlocked, and uh, th well, this is the thing, um, screen tearing in games. Uh, this is kind of the generation where it really kicked in hard, right? Yeah, it, you could s occasionally you would see it in previous gen titles, yep. especially Gran on the original Turismo Xbox. 4 on the PS2 had it. Yeah, it did, yeah. but it became a much more common thing mm -hmm. this generation. Especially on PlayStation 3, if I recall. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah, I did actually play this at E3 2005, and it was on a PowerPC uh, dev kit. I think they were using, like, Radeon X800 GPUs and in mm, those that's things. Cool. This but is the one with Razer Callahan in it. <laughs> I kind of like, I like the aesthetic of somewhat... I do like the aesthetic somewhat. I just uh, I just don't like the color palette. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very you know uh, it's single gold. goldy brown, uh, goldy brown. Yeah. Well, it's Deus Ex Human Revolution Vision style the racing well, game. Movies yeah. kind of moved on to that teal and orange aesthetic. This is just kind of yeah. orange. <laughs> it's just the orange, orangey the gold. <laughs> Who needs complementary colors? So there wasn't a lot that was genuine in, in that, really, was there? I mean, the, 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 the need for speed no. footage, though, was running like sub-30 for yeah. a lot of it. Yeah. So that looked rather genuine. Here ...with the support we're getting from Microsoft, and we couldn't be more excited about the possibilities as this relationship continues to grow. Right. Thanks, Don. Yeah. We'll see you up here in a few years. <laughs> Hawking Connect, you know. Talking Xbox One. Yeah, oh. <laughs> Don. So I think you can see why we're so excited about the this future of Xbox so 360. All of these games, all of these visuals, all that power in this one box. Without a doubt, yeah. this is the best team of developers and publishers working He's on any game wrap, platform wrap it up, anywhere in the world. And with their support, we will have... I can't recall. If, let's see if they do like a one more thing at the end. I can't recall either. Okay, He's done. Guess. Everybody's happy. Is that Robbie Bach back on stage? Oh, yeah. That's swagger. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. We are thrilled by the great support and breadth of titles that all of our publishing partners are delivering for Xbox 360. Now, earlier when Peter said that we have all of the world's best publishers, he wasn't speaking figuratively. Tonight, we are pleased to provide the final piece of the puzzle. The final piece of the puzzle. I'm very excited to announce that one of the world's great publishing houses is creating games for Xbox 360. Who's this going to be? It's a publisher. I'm honored to present our newest partner. Oh, I think I know what this is. It's Final Fantasy XI. Yeah. Online. This is announcing Square Enix support. or Yeah, for the Xbox. And they started with... Final Fantasy XI. Yeah. I mean, this is an important moment because the 360 
broke Sony's stranglehold on third-party development. It did, yeah. You know, they had Rockstar, they had Square Enix. Yeah, this, this was the big moment. The only major Japanese title I feel like they missed was Metal Gear Solid 4. Yeah. Which is yeah. like forever trapped on PlayStation 3. Yeah. Which Annoyingly. Is an annoying thing, obviously. It needs a remaster, that game. Yeah. But even then, like, just looking technologically here, this looks... I mean, it, it is, of course, that title. We, these, these, in comparison to more, I would argue, mainline Final Fantasy games, never looked nearly as good due to the constraints, I think, of development and what the games were trying to do. Yeah. Um, but this looks very much of that area, very realistic graphically. Well, th remember, this is, this game yeah. exists on PlayStation Two. Yeah. So first like, and it's like, yeah, it's, it's just an it, HD version of if, that. If you're just looking at this and it, this is what you're seeing of next gen, it doesn't look anything particularly exactly. great. It, it just looks, you know, like baked shadows everywhere. Something's looking completely unshadowed. You know, like relatively low poly models. If you're coming into this looking to see next gen things, this is more, I guess, an industry interesting thing like you guys were just talking about, getting Square Enix on board for the Xbox. Right, right. Oh, they're bringing out Wada. Uh, okay. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Okay. Well, Thank you, Robbie. I'm honored to have this opportunity to speak with you tonight at E3. The largest video game event. So he turns up at the PlayStation the 3 conference the same day, right? Yeah, I think they reveal Final Fantasy 13 at Sony. Mm. And it was, everybody thought it was exclusive for a while. And um, that's where the meme about, like, you don't know Japanese culture, but they just <laughs> yeah. committed a major, like. <laughs> the betrayal of time. The betrayal yeah, of time. <laughs> <laughs> But I am an expert. That Square Enix will join with Microsoft and Xbox to bring our games to Xbox 360 and Xbox Live. All right. Yeah. Yeah, this is on board. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm happy that this happened. Uh, yeah, getting more people to play these games, which are Xbox great, obviously. Outstanding features, such as HD graphics. 360's outstanding features such as HD graphics, <laughs> network connectivity, and connectivity. In <laughs> like connectivity between humans so or something like that? Like social, social impact. Well, if they were pushing <laughs> online gaming with Final Fantasy XI, it is a good fit. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is actually yeah, yeah. a good fit. Better ecosystem at the time than you would yeah, see on Better infrastructure. Yeah. Mm. Let me interject here briefly. When we were originally recording this, we were kind of running short on time, so we skipped ahead here at the end thinking that that was all there would be. But there is one little thing that we missed here shown during the conference, and it's this. So basically, this is some sort of tech demo, I guess, that is tangentially related to Final Fantasy XI. Uh, and it, I do think this looks great. I'm not sure that this actually became anything necessarily, but clearly... But clearly this is in the same category as that tech demo shared around at the beginning of this previous generation. So it just gives an idea of where they were going with the tech. And this is actually one of the nicest looking things I think shown at the conference. Hence why I felt the need to throw this little bit of voiceover in here just for some context. There's some great looking reflections here at the end as well. But anyways, let's get back to the wrap up. But yeah, you know, after the Square Enix stuff there, it's um, this is pretty much it. Robbie Bach wrapping it up. I'm going to finish it off with a little montage, I'm sure. But so, what do you guys think? I'm, I'm actually surprised at the lack of... <laughs> I mean, they did show games, and a good number of them, excluding some CGI sequences, looked very much so, you know, very much so from that era. Very, you know, the graphics that you would expect, and nothing out of the box other than, I would say, Gears, Gears of War which looked uh, really pretty good in spite of its frame rate. But the lack of showing of games almost is what surprised me. And the lack of the focus on specs, which is what the whole part, a huge part of the Sony conference was, arguably showing the bar graphs, bringing up uh, 
you know internal numbers of about how many how many how their precision of HDR is as a result of their GPU and things like that. None of that was discussed. Yeah, I think what what Sony were doing was trying to claim technical leadership, and uh, there was obviously a mixture of some really interesting tech demos there, which we suspect were genuine, but a lot of fakery. That was uh, fake, by the way. That that. They showed some fake initial Quake 4 footage and then some real Quake yeah, 4 yeah. footage. <laughs> but I think the point is that, um, obviously, I think this is kind of more of a, an emphasis on what they, their kind of philosophy behind the system was yeah. as opposed yeah. to... And, and to be fair, Sony were years behind on the online features. They certainly were. And, um, you know, it's just fascinating, I think, that... Um, uh, the hardware itself was probably only just finished in terms of uh, in terms of development here, so a lot of what we're seeing turned out a ton better in its final iteration. But even then, you know, as you said on uh, previously, John, this generation wasn't a great wasn't great for performance generally, was it? No. So not at all. you know, things look terrible here, but you know, perfect dark and and Need for Speed and plenty of titles. Weren't Quake that, 4. Weren't, yeah. yeah, weren't that great at launch on the Gosh, 360. Quake 4, my goodness. Yeah, that's kind of the issue. I mean, but even still, you know, there was still a lot of impressive games happening in this generation. I, I was and, there day one on 360. Yeah, and 360 was awesome, this yeah. generation. And I feel like, again, this maybe this is the best they had at the time, but I do feel like they definitely greatly exceeded what they showed during this conference, which yeah. is exactly... The inverse. It, it, what happened with Sony? It's weird. I, I'm, I mentioned earlier, but they haven't shown really Perfect Dark Zero at all. Which well, they, they showed it during the MTV special, which we didn't cover here. Okay, but was it more in depth then, as as a result? Like showing I don't the single player was, complex? I don't think it was super in depth. We just got Wall Guy out of it. Yeah, Wall Guy out of it, which obviously undersells, I think, a lot of the game's graphical prowess. It does. Yeah, wow, I that, think it's. Uh, was that Dead Rising at the that end? Was yeah, rising that was at the Dead end. Rising. Yeah, yeah. Wow, cause that was another awesome launch. Well, it wasn't also a launch title. Also, condemned but it was, another. Uh, that was a know, launch title, wasn't yeah, it? Condemned. Yeah, was yeah, launch and awesome. Yeah. yeah, awesome. A lot of really you know great things like volumetric lighting, parallax uh, maps, and. Um, you know, stencil shadows everywhere. So it's a kind of a bar bizarre mixture. Some things were faked, some things were real, but in no way representative of the oh. final product. Yeah, generally always looking worse. Yeah, and I think overall, it, oh, you know, it, 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 perhaps they were too honest in a way. Um, mm -hmm. The stuff was too early to show. The final thing was, was, was markedly better, but uh, fascinating to go back and look at this stuff. Yeah, but I think with that, it, pretty much uh, wraps it up for us here so thanks for joining me guys yeah no thanks a lot folks and i think uh, we'll be back in the future again when we actually tackle the infamous 2006 <laughs> sony conference where everything came crumbling down mm -hmm. but for now if you enjoyed this video as always be sure to like subscribe hit that button up there to you know ring the bell for notifications and follow us over on twitter and until next time, stay retro. Yeah.